Your opponent starts off their turn with 5 cards in their extra deck, 4 cards in hand, while you have 4 interruptions on your field. And all of that, just with pure Dogmatica. Wanna see how it's done? Check it out. Welcome back to another video, another Dogmatica, pure Dogmatica deck profile. The only way, in my opinion, in which you can play this beautiful deck that honestly is not seeing enough love. We have seen the Dogmatica engine splashed in a few decks, and I also made a video of me taking down a Locals 5-0 with Voiceless Voice Dogmatica. You can check it out by clicking here, the full tournament, but today we're playing 40 cards, pure Dogmatica, pure gas, and after showing you the deck, I'm gonna show you how this deck plays and how incredibly obnoxious it could be. Like the video, subscribe. Um, we're, we're having fun this off season, right? We don't wanna, not, not everything has to be meta, right? So let's start off, start off with the deck, then uh, of course show you how it actually works. Dogmatica Engine, we're playing three Incredible Ecclesia. Uh, Dogmatica Ecclesia rather, of course searches any of your Dogmatica spells and traps and monsters. We're playing one Maximus here and we're playing one Fleur de Lis. This is the monster lineup basically. We are playing three Nadir Servant because this card is just really really good in this deck. Dumping valuable stuff out of your extra deck and of course grabbing follow up. This card can add from the graveyard as well. So if you lose access to your Maximus or your ritual monsters, you can gain access to them with your servant. Now, we're playing one Albazoa and one Calamity. The reason that, like, this is the, the main boss of the deck. This is what you want to summon every time you go first. This will send, basically, half of your opponent's extra deck to the graveyard. They can choose cards from their hand and extra deck and send them to the graveyard. One card for each two cards in their extra deck. So when you start off, usually they will send about five or six cards from their hand or extra deck to the graveyard. That is going to be almost half their deck and again we're going to rip 10 cards from their deck with this combo so this is your end boss it also makes all of your dogmatica monsters unaffected so that's important now this this is the newest support card for dogmatica released in photon hypernova this is like the end game boss card this card is so good and our strategy revolves around it this adds any dogmatica spell ritual spell or monster but if your opponent controls a monster, you can add another Dogmatica card. So this adds two cards, and every single turn, soft ones per turn, can send a, mon a card from your extra deck or from your opponent's extra deck to the graveyard if you control Dogmatica Ritual every single turn. So this is another card you rip out of your opponent's extra deck. Now, how do we get a monster on our opponent's board if we're going first? This engine is so good, and it's like basically... Only good in Dogmatica and maybe Mechanko. Three Gen, one Ken, we're also playing Reinforcement of the Army. This guy summons Ken to your opponent's field. You draw two cards, discard one. Then your opponent controls a monster. You can activate Dogmatic Calamity. We have tons of board breakers in this deck and take cards to utilize that. We're going to resolve Ken as well. Summon Gen to our opponent's field. Make them discard a card. This is how we hand rip them. And this engine is just so good because you don't need your normal summon for anything. This is why we play three of these because we can turn them into an Almirage because they have less than 1,000 attacks. Sorry, my voice is really cracking up for some reason. Now, how do we get more extra deck ripping effects? We play another engine that doesn't rely on anything that our deck does. Just a bonus engine if you draw it. Three Unicorn, one Fenrir, and one Kashtira Birth. That's it. Special summon the, the Unicorn or Fenrir searches the Unicorn. If you draw birth, you can normal summon additionally. But Unicorn itself, really good card because again, can and again activate it on our opponent's side of the field, which means they trigger Unicorn for another extra deck rip. Now, how do we utilize on all of these beautiful effects? We play three thrust with a bountiful of targets. We are playing three talents, so we can either take the Ken or Gen or draw additional cards, or if we're at a really good position, just look at our opponent's hand, of course. Reinforcement of the army can get us access to Ken and Gen, so this is another copy of Gen that we can search from the deck. And then cards like Change of Heart, that is searchable by Thrust, Snatch Steal, and Mind Control, that is also searchable by Thrust, can take the Gen or the Ken, re-trigger them on our board, and then we can, of course, turn them into 
a rank three, which we also play. We're playing another one of in Call by the Grave, just because this deck just can utilize that. <clears throat> Chicken game, and then one skill drain, two skill drain, three skill drain, honestly. Like, this is good when you have a 4,000 attack monster on the field or with your Castures. It's really, really good to have that. One Harpy's Feather Duster, which again, we can utilize by, um, like if we are going second, we have a lot of cards to deal with that. And we can, of course, use that to wipe our opponent's uh, back row and Dogmatica Punishment, which is just absolutely phenomenal. Um, you will set this up on your board on your turn. So this is the, the main strategy of the deck. x is relatively straightforward. Almaraz is important to turn um, your Gen into an extra deck monster. Then you can go into SP or Special Summon the, the Ecclesia. Secure Garda to turn the Almaraz into. So you don't just have... Um, so you can also get a link in the graveyard for things like Maximus, right? One Little Knight. Um, one Fairy Jeet and Bicephalus. This will draw you an additional card if you need to. Again, digging for that cannon again. And Bicephalus can out really strong and big bodies with Dogmatica Punishment. And also send... Uh, Ferjeet or Garura when it's into the graveyard, so it's really, really good. Synchros, we have Harold of the Arclight, Malong. We have Omega here, which I think is actually really, really important. And when I was playing with this uh, at Locals yesterday, it came up a lot. Because this can sh shuffle any card from your graveyard into the deck. And itself, of course. So you can recycle really important things that you need. Like more Dogmatica cards for your Dogmatica Matrix. You can return the Ritual or the Ritual Spell. But also, most importantly, a lot of these pieces and Ken and Gen to make Gen live again when you already used your Ken. So really valuable. And then, of course, you have to play Lulu. Like, you don't have to play this if you don't own one. You can just play any level 12 because you need that for Dogmatic Calamity. Then one Ants, one Garura, one Titanoclad. Bamboozling Gossip Shadow is... Um, the rank 3 you make by stealing your opponent's um, Ken and then turning them into a monster negate, essentially. This turns any monster effect as a quick effect to both players draw one card. Absolutely beautiful, right? Um, so we have any, something to do with that. Aggregator and then uh, Typhon, Sky Crisis, of course. This will help you in a lot of decks, in a lot of games, come back into the game. Now I will show the side a, a bit later. But we are playing a package of one Schism, Apclone, and Window because it's just so easy to make in this deck with Nadir Servant and Maximus. So just know that we are running that. Now, let's jump into um, a little bit of a combo-ish and see how this deck plays out. Now again, not every hand is going to be like perfect, but this is just like a semblance of what the deck can do. Then you can run with it, make your own tweaks, and just like, you know, be creative about it. Uh, and I think this is like a really, really good way of doing that. So in this hand, obviously, you will start with Unicorn, just because you need no monsters on board. And then Normal Summoning again, and Special Summoning Ken to our opponent's side of the field, right? Now, Ken will activate. This is, uh, we have three cards in hand currently. And our opponent is activating a monster effect, but they also control a monster, which is very, very important. Now we can go ahead and draw two cards, discard one, for example, right? Uh, we draw into a matrix here. And then we can um, go ahead and use the talents here to take our opponent's Gen, activate its effect, summon again to their field, which means they now lose a card from their hand, right? Now they, they get to lose a card. So now, um, what we need here is activating Thrust, because again, our opponent controls a monster and they activated a monster effect. We're gonna grab Nadir Servant here. We're gonna activate Nadir Servant. Um, before we do that, of course, we're just gonna, you know, not lock ourselves from the extra deck, which is uh, very important here. You need to mind your steps carefully. We're gonna go into a Gossip Shadow just to get a, a negate on the board already. So we have a monster negate, and we have a unicorn, and we have an extra deck monster, which is great. So Nadir Servant is gonna send us 
Garura to the graveyard. Search for Maximus. And then draw us an additional card. And now we have four cards in hand, right? We can activate Ecclesia here. Ecclesia on summon can grab us a copy of Dogmatica Punishment. And then we can banish the Maximus. Now, again, if you didn't have the Matrix, you grab the Matrix here, of course. Um, we banish the Garura to activate the Maximus. We activate the Dogmatica Matrix, which can now add us a copy of both Albazoa and Calamity, right? Because our opponent controls a monster, we can add an additional card. We're still with four cards in hand, which is really, really great. We can activate Maximus here. Uh, in this specific scenario, what I would do is for sure send Titanic Lead because we want Fleur de Lis. Um, and then you can either send Omega or Malong here or actually Farajit. Just draw an additional card, right? We don't really need anything. We can leave that card in our opponent's board just to play around Lightning Storm evenly, stuff like that, right? And try to always just summon in defense so people don't like kill their monster onto your board. Uh, we shuffle, we draw another one with Farajit, put another card to the bottom, and now we can perform a ritual summon with Dogmatic Calamity, which sends, either uses itself as a normal ritual spell, right? Or sends from the extra deck, but it has to be exactly that level. So we send the Lulu here. Um, let's move this guy over here so we can see Albazoa, right? Now, our opponent already lost two cards from their extra deck right? And we can look at their deck now. If the number is uneven, you can look at their deck with this because you now control the Dogmatica um, Ritual Monster. Take out another card from their extra deck and then activate um, Albazoa here to send the remaining card. So it's going to be two making it 13, one making it 12. And now they need to send six cards out of their extra deck. And of course, we haven't even activated Unicorn, which looks at their extra deck and sends another one before anything else. So it's 11. They're going to have to send five. They are left with six cards in their extra deck, or they need to send cards from their hand. Either way, two thirds of their extra deck is probably gone, and like one or two cards from the hand are gone because Gen uh, took out one of them, right? And then we basically end our turn here. Titanic Lead will trigger grabbing us a Fleur de Lis. If you want, you can also trigger Lulu and summon another Ecclesia. Like, these are all unaffected. So, our opponent sent two-thirds of their extra deck and basically two-thirds of their hand to the graveyard, right? We have uh, essentially a Monster Negate. We have another Unicorn. We have a Pop and another Interruption. We can send things like, of course, um, Ants or Malong, which is two Interruptions in one card. Everything here is unaffected. And we have Fleur de Lis. This is why you probably want to leave out a space on your board just to summon the Fleur de Lis for an additional negate on resolution. This is the deck. Obviously, it's not going to be as like explosive every time because you might not get access to all engines, but you have a lot of draw options here to dig into your deck. And also, a lot of times, the towers set up with a pop in Fleur de Lis, which is you get to basically by just activating, um, just by activating Nadir 7, you can get to it is often a lot to win in a casual environment. This is not a YCS deck, but um, this is just fun. If you do want to play Dogmatica, this is probably the most competitive way and the purest way without playing Voiceless Voice, without playing Dogmatica as a tiny engine. This is like how you play the deck, which is awesome. Let me know in the comments if you like this uh, strategy. Sorry if my voice kept cracking up throughout the video. I have no idea what happened. Um, leave your comments, like the video, subscribe. I'll see you on the other side. Peace. Thank you.